Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the region of reversal. Now you've probably heard about this, uh, real world pilots are pretty familiar with this one because it, it's a little intuitive when you land the plane, but for uh, most folks you probably haven't thought of this too much. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate the effect just a little bit and then kind of show you sort of how to get yourself out of it. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, what is the region of reversal? Basically the region of reversal is a place in the aircraft's power curve, if you want to think about a lift, drag, a thrust, weight, and all that other good stuff, where the aircraft adding power has no impact on the speed of the aircraft. Now this occurs when you're flying very, very, very slow and you tend to be under a significant drag, which usually means you got nose up, you got the flaps down, the plane's struggling. Adding power when you're in that region only reduces your descent rate. It does very, very little to actually change your speed. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I'm gonna go ahead and unpause here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my flaps all the way down, drop those flaps, and I'm gonna go ahead and sh intentionally slow the plane to a very, very slow minimum speed. Uh, for those of you familiar with this, this is called slow flight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the power. I'm gonna stick my head down so everybody can see my tachometer there. So I'm doing about, uh, I think there's about 43, 44 knots here. We're <laughs> pretty slow. And I've got my throttle, as you can see, almost all the way in, and I'm barely maintaining my 45 knots without losing any of my climb rate. So I'm gonna push the throttle all the way forward. Watch this. There it is. See how my climb rate is slowly creeping up, but my airspeed is not changing. <laughs> now, if you're in a very, very, very high powered aircraft, this would be a little different. You might be able to power through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my throttle back. I'm gonna push the nose down and I'm gonna go ahead and push the throttle. I'm just gonna build up some speed here. Just about as much speed as it's gonna let me build up. Yeah, looks good there. Uh, let's hold about 60. Push the nose forward. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up again. My flaps are all the way down here. So I'm generating as much drag as I can. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'll reduce the power. And we're gonna be outside of the region of reversal. Or, you know, I'm gonna push full throttle. Now notice what's gonna happen is we pick up speed significantly faster and our climb rate increases faster because we're not in that trough of super duper 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 high drag. So one of the things is you need to get rid of drag in order to be able to improve your speed. Now the interesting thing is, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the flaps all the way up here. We're gonna go ahead and slow the plane down again without flaps and show you how dramatic it is even when you don't have your flaps deployed. Keep in mind the stall speed of this plane without the flaps is about 50. So we're gonna have to hold that nose up pretty high. Okay, so we're gonna pull myself. And again, slow flight without flaps is kind of tricky, especially when it's windy like it is today. All right, so we got ourselves about zero feet per minute. Okay, there we go. So my throttle right now is pushed, uh, I'm gonna call it about 85% of the way forward. Actually, nope, it's at full throttle right now. I am at full throttle at 42 knots and the plane is neither accelerating nor climbing. There's so much drag being produced by the wings of this plane right now that is basically canceling out any effect. And we're just now starting to be able to power our way out of it. Now, if you couple this with a really, 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 really hot day, this plane is just going to be crippled. Now notice, we'll do the same experiment. I'll let the nose come back down. We'll build up some speed. Again, my flaps are retracted to demonstrate how powerful this effect is. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to about 75 knots. There we go, 75. Now the nose is down significantly. I have a lot less drag. I'm just gonna push the throttle all the way forward. Watch the difference in acceleration. See how we're doing through 80, we're coming up through 90, coming up through 100. Notice how, because that reduced drag is there, because it's not as much induced drag, this aircraft has no difficulty powering its way right up to its normal speed almost effortlessly. It's almost like the first 20 knots take 10 times longer to get than the last 50 knots kind of a situation. So what does this mean when we're landing the plane? So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go ahead and spin us around. I'll line us back up. We're at Waterbury, Oxford, for those of you who like to uh, recreate our little experiment here. And I should just be able to do 180. And theoretically, if my math is reasonable, we should be able to see a runway that we're pretty darn close to. And there's no way in the universe I can go all the way past south without seeing it. Of course, uh, you know, this is flight sim and uh, sometimes I miss things, so I'm not too, too worried about it. Ah, there it is right there. So what I'll do is I'll speed up time just a little bit. Cheat, 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 cheat. Gonna cheat just a little bit. And we're gonna line ourselves up this lovely runway. There we are. Okay, so let's take advantage of this knowledge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the throttle back. I'm actually gonna fly the plane into a really, really bad skid here. Skid, skid, skid. Give me some skid. Give me that skid. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So now the plane is in a ridiculously sideways skid. You can see my rudder pedals all the way. And I have no flaps right now. I am just literally flying the plane sideways as an effort to basically suck the energy out of the plane, which is exactly my goal. So what I'm going to do is intentionally force the airplane into the region of reversal, which if um, how far back I'm having to pull the yoke right now is any indication, I've reached it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my little thing here. So now normally what you do is you go ahead and pop your flaps down. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the nose of the plane upwards intentionally. And I'm going to hold it there so I create so much drag that the plane basically doesn't go anywhere but down. So again, I'm not using my flaps here. I'm literally just holding the nose down. Now check it out. My plane is descending at 1,000 feet per minute. And I am well below my stall speed. I am like helicopter landing here. So now we're dangerously close to a stall. I'm going to give it full throttle. I'm going to push the nose of the plane forward just a little bit. Catch ourselves right back to our original speed. And now notice, I was able to basically falling leaf this airplane like it was a helicopter during a normal landing approach. We have a very strong wind today, so it makes it kind of tricky. Woo! Of course, in the real world, when you do this, you tend to spin and die, but that happens. Oh man, I hate these uh, no flappers, because when you do no flappers, you can't see the runway. So there's our lovely runway there. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back. A big old one eight right there. Again, no flapper landings are super duper fun because um, you have no drag. So when you're sitting here over the runway, check this out. I'm going to pull over the runway, build up some extra drag. Watch the plane sink suddenly. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And watch this. And there's the region reversal, and the plane just sinks right back onto the runway. So you can see that we were able to take this plane and basically drop vertically with it even though we did not have flaps with no increase of speed because of our knowledge of this fancy region of reversal. Now, this is going to sound weird, but Flight Sim actually doesn't model it as aggressive as it is in the real world. In the real world, you basically fall down like a rock. It's actually really, really cool. So hopefully that encourages you to play around with that effect because it's amazing. Now, if you really have a death wish, try it in an airliner. It's kind of cool. But other than that, enjoy.